The pilot should be aware of all the factors that will lead to the successful completion of the approach. At what altitude will she break out of the clouds? Where will she be in relation to the runway while on the final approach course? What type of runway lighting and approach lighting system will be in use at the airport? Will the reported weather conditions permit for a successful transition to a landing? These types of questions should all be addressed in the approach briefing. Whether receiving radar vectors or flying a full procedure instrument approach, the pilot will eventually receive an approach clearance from ATC. Here's an example of what a pilot will hear when being given radar vectors to an instrument approach. Two Niner, turn right heading 300. Maintain 3000 till established on the final approach course. Cleared VOR, runway 35 left approach. An aircraft that flies a full approach procedure without the assistance of radar vectors will usually get a shorter clearance. Do Niner, cleared VOR, runway 35 left approach. This clearance is more concise because the pilot will be expected to follow the published approach procedure to join the final approach course. She will not receive a heading and altitude to fly from air traffic control. The pilot will sometimes be requested to report when established on the final approach course. After becoming established on the final approach course, the pilot will be granted a frequency change by ATC. This will either be a change to the control tower frequency or to a common traffic advisory frequency. Regardless, the pilot should promptly contact the new frequency to state her intentions. In the case of an airport without an operating control tower, the pilot must communicate with any other aircraft in the vicinity to ensure aircraft separation throughout the approach. Scenario traffic, Su-73, five miles on the final approach course for the VOR runway 31. For full stop, Crookston. As the pilot continues the approach procedure and nears the final approach fix, she should execute the before landing checklist. The checklist prepares the aircraft and its occupants for landing. It should be initiated prior to reaching the final approach fix. This checklist contains the following items. Pilot and passenger seat backs, most upright position. Seats and seat belts, secured and locked. Fuel selector, both. Mixture, set for the best performance during landing, rich or as appropriate for density altitude. Cabin power 12 volt switch, off. Aircraft lights, for day, pulse light on. At night, taxi and landing lights on, pulse light selected, off. When the aircraft is two nautical miles from the final approach fix, the pilot should establish the approach configuration and airspeed. If the approach does not have a specific final approach fix, the pilot should establish this configuration upon commencing a descent to the minimum descent altitude. In the Cessna 172, the pilot should select 10 degrees of flaps and fly the aircraft at 90 knots. Now that the pilot and the aircraft are both prepared for the approach, the pilot may continue tracking the final approach course. As always, it's important to comply with any ATC-issued instructions or restrictions. As the aircraft proceeds along the approach, the pilot must carefully track the final approach course. In the case of most non-precision approaches, the final approach course actually gets narrower as the aircraft flies closer to the airport. This means that the pilot should identify any course deviations and correct for them promptly. But remember, because the course becomes narrower, a heading correction of only a few degrees will quickly get the aircraft back on course. Because the width of the final approach course gets smaller, the course deviation indicator will appear to be more sensitive. While the sensitivity actually remains the same, except for in the case of a GPS approach, the needle is more likely to show even the slightest deviation from course. Again, Make a heading correction of only a few degrees to re-intercept the proper course and continue inbound towards the airport. While most non-precision approaches utilize on-airport nav aids such as a VOR or NDB, there are some approaches that use a nav aid that is not located at the airport. An example of this can be found in Spokane, Washington. On this approach, the pilot navigates to the Spokane VOR and then continues the procedure by flying from the VOR. A pilot must be aware of the location of the nav aid she is using 
to prevent confusion and anticipate any errors that might occur during the approach, such as crossing the cone of confusion over a VOR. To enhance situational awareness, the UND Aerospace Standardization Manual requires that several callouts be made during the entire approach profile. Upon arrival at a half nautical mile from the final approach fix, the pilot flying shall call out flaps 10 before landing to the line complete. Upon crossing the final approach fix, the pilot flying will call before landing below the line complete and will start her initial descent to land. At 1,000 feet above the touchdown zone elevation, the pilot flying will call out altimeters and instruments cross-checked. As the descent progresses, the pilot will anticipate reaching the MDA and at 100 feet above the MDA will call out 100 to minimums. Upon reaching the MDA, the pilot flying will call out minimums. The pilot flying will then, upon reaching the visual descent point, call out VDP runway in sight 12 o'clock landing, or approach lights in sight, continuing. As the aircraft continues the descent to the runway of intended landing, the pilot flying will call out, no flags, clear to land, once the aircraft reaches 500 feet above the touchdown zone elevation. If, after reaching the MDA, the pilot fails to meet the requirements necessary to descend from the MDA, she will continue at the MDA to the missed approach point where she will call out, no contact, go around, and execute the missed approach procedure. As the aircraft approaches the minimum descent altitude, or MDA, she must begin to transition from a descent to level flight. In doing so, it will be necessary to adjust the throttle and elevator trim to maintain a constant altitude and airspeed. The pilot, now flying at the MDA, should reference the charted visual descent point if one exists. The VDP is a point from which a pilot can make a stabilized, three-degree glide path approach from the MDA to a landing. If there is no charted VDP, the pilot can calculate one as follows. Simply determine the minimum descent height, which will be an AGL altitude, and then divide by 300. The number 300 is used because 300 feet per nautical mile is a three-degree glide path. For example, if the MDH is 600 feet, divide 600 by 300, and your VDP is two nautical miles from the end of the runway. Let's take a look at an example. Using the Rochester VOR runway two approach, you can see that the minimum descent height for an aircraft with DME is 363 feet. Because 363 feet divided by 300 equals approximately 1.2, we have determined that the visual descent point is 1.2 nautical miles from the end of the runway. As listed on the approach plate, the runway end is located at 7.8 nautical miles from the Rochester VOR. As a result, the VDP is located 6.6 .6 miles, or 6.6 .6 DME, from the Rochester VOR. As the aircraft arrives at the visual descent point, the pilot will either call out runway in sight 12 o'clock, landing, and then transition to a stabilized approach and landing, or the pilot will continue flying at the minimum descent altitude until reaching the missed approach point. Remember that the pilot may only descend below the MDA if he or she meets the following criteria. Runway environment is visible. Visibility requirements are met and the aircraft is in a position to make a normal descent and landing. These requirements are listed in the UND Cessna 172 standardization manual and are required by FAR 91.175. You can check out all these resources for more information. Once the pilot has met the listed criteria, she should reduce the airspeed below 85 knots and set the flaps to full. The pilot should maintain visual contact with the runway environment and fly a stabilized approach until touchdown. 